Good morning. Deux adultes. Two adults. At Saint Martin la Plaine, near Lyon in France, Ilian and Pierre provide shelter to 850 animals of all types from all parts of the world. Among the residents of this park, which attracts 135,000 visitors each year, one in particular receives very special attention. Digit, are you awake? Digit. Digit. Come on, wakey wakey. Come on now, are you getting up or not? You have to get up, it's late. Born in the park but abandoned by her mother, Digit lives with Iliane and Pierre, her adoptive parents. Oh yes, we need to wake up, didn't we? Oh, but you slept so well this morning. What is it, my little one? You don't want to get up? Oh, you got the hiccups this morning. You had the hiccups. Digit was born in the upper parts of the park, but her mother Pamela was not able to suckle either her or her brother Jinko. Iliane and Pierre bottle-fed Digit for several days before returning her to her mother. However, it seemed that Pamela's maternal fibre had permanently atrophied. Left to her own devices, Digit was under threat from the brutal treatment of her young cousins. She was just three days old when Pierre took the decision to remove her from the group. Today, Digit lives with her adoptive parents, Iliane and Pierre, in a specially appointed room in the heart of the park. The rituals of this primate family are somewhat unusual. Where is the easiest place to have a pee? Out the window. So Digit sits at the window, puts her little backside out and pees. No, I told you that you mustn't touch. Oh, you're all dirty again. To save Digit's life, Iliane had to chew food for the convalescent young gorilla. Naturally, this act created deep ties between them. Yeah. Look, pick it up. Yeah. Darling. Oh. Whoops. Allez, mon bébé. Come on, my baby. Allez, Come along. Before the park opens to the public, Digit goes to an enclosure at the centre of the park. It's a crash where she spends her day with other young primates. Give me a hand. Calm down, children. Calm down. Digit shares her playground with some cheeky young chimpanzees. You're a little darling. In the wild, these animals don't live together. Chimpanzees are masters of bluff, unlike the gorillas, which are much calmer. So in the public's mind, they should not be made to live together in a zoo. That may be true, but we didn't have the choice. The choice we were offered was either she remained all alone or she went with the chimpanzees. When small, Digit was accustomed to walking around the park under Pierre's marvelling and protective gaze. I have absolutely no desire for Digit to go and get a hand bitten off by tigers or to be electrocuted. So I have to maintain a certain authority. We love them very much and we don't want anything bad to happen to them. Today, Digit is a sweet but powerful adolescent and Pierre does not have quite the same authority over her. Look, I'm going to put it on. This reassures me because, I mean, it's a worry every morning and evening, you know. If she ever wants to run off and do something silly, I mean, anything's possible. An accident can happen in a few seconds and then I... It's true that I've tried to assess all the risks around and I tell myself, you can have a problem just like that in a matter of seconds. No, this is really reassuring. Today, Iliane and Pierre are preparing Digit's future. In Africa, gorillas live for around 30 years, but in captivity, Digit could survive to the age of 50. Close to retirement age, Iliane and Pierre know that Digit might live much longer than they will. 
They want to imagine the perspective of a new life at the park for Digit in a new group of gorillas. Pierre has undertaken a construction project of titanic proportions with just a handful of employees. It is Digit's future home of sorts. Do you want to go and see the ostriches? Digit. Do you want to go and see the ostriches? You want to go and see the ostriches? Oh my goodness, every man for himself. Wait for Elian. Go on. It's always me who obeys. It's not you very often. Oh, so you jump over the fences. Wait till you're my age. You think you can just jump over the fences like that? Oh, gently! Elian and Pierre savour these moments with Digit with particular attention, knowing that this situation cannot endure. Their fairy tale is coming to an end. Pierre has been working on a scheme for several months to bring in some young gorillas from another animal park. He is hoping to find a fiancé and some girlfriends for Digit. However, so as not to upset Digit, Pierre cannot be absent for more than a day. I have to make a very quick trip to the south of England. It's where exactly? Well, we're going to Howlett's Wild Animal Park, and with a small plane it's possible to land at an airport called Manston. And for you, is it possible for you to get us there and back in the same day? What are your constraints? Well, I think that we can do it. Thanks to his large network of friends, Pierre will only have to pay for the fuel. Come here, my baby. <laughs> Come quickly now. Come on, quick now, my little rabbit. We're going home. Oh, you're a big girl. Now you can put your hands on my shoulders when you want to. Come quickly, my little chick. Come quickly, my little chick. Oh, there, 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 there. Shall we take the bracelet off? Can you take care of her, Elian? I'm going to eat otherwise she'll steal it all from me. It's a short night for Digit. Today is the day Pierre has planned his lightning visit to England. Come on. Come to me. Pierre must seize the opportunity that presents itself for preparing Digit's future. He has an important meeting with the owner of Howlett's, an immense animal park in the United Kingdom. Pierre is going to negotiate the transfer of three young English gorillas with whom Digit might found her own family. This is a crucial day for Eliane and Pierre, important for the park and primordial for Digit's future. If the pilot calls, tell him that we left St. Martin 8 and we hope there'll be no traffic jams. Right. OK, then. Bye-bye, my sweetie. See you this evening. This is when we took Digit out in the car and she sank her teeth into the foam of the steering wheel. She got a good hold of it a few times. The hand doesn't slip. Every time I've ever taken a plane, it's been for something to do with gorillas. I've been twice to Cameroon to bring back Digit's mother and the other gorillas. I took a plane to go to England. It was to see Digit's father, Tam Tam. And I'm taking a plane again today, and it's to go and see Digit's companions. So I must say, for me, aeroplanes and gorillas, they go together like a horse and carriage. Pierre is flying to the park with the largest number of gorillas in captivity in the world. In fact, Digit's father Tam Tam was born there. Transferred to Pierre's park in 1993, he has become an excellent reproducer. Pierre is welcomed to the prestigious animal park belonging to the Aspinall family. In 1957, well before it became a fashionable combat, John Aspinall invested his fortune in buying protected animals. He has established exceptional ties with these rare animals. John had so much trust in the animals that he would even take his son Damien into the gorilla enclosures. Today, Damien must be the only man in the world to rub shoulders with powerful silverbacks. But he looks a bit tired today. Hey, hey. You lovely boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, you lovely boy. Damien Aspinall has inherited a hundred or so gorillas whose sentimental value is priceless 
but he doesn't wish to keep all the gorillas to himself. The challenge is to introduce young gorillas born in captivity into the African jungle. Not content to just sign an agreement with Damien Aspinall for his three gorillas, Pierre makes a commitment, despite his debts, to participate financially in the project to return gorillas to the wild. Despite being attached to the gorillas, Thank you. Damien, acting in the same spirit Thank as his father, approves you. sending three of them to France. Fantastic. Oh, I don't know these people. They've entrusted us with one gorilla. There's no reason why they should entrust us with others. And today they've agreed to it. They're going to give us more. We'll, be, we'll put together a fine group and they'll be able to reproduce and we'll participate with other breeders so that maybe one day Digit's children can be reintroduced into the wild. We'll go to Africa to see how they're getting on, so I hope this will be a good collaboration. I mean, I represent a small park. They're a big institution and they have complete confidence in me. I'm really honored and also very moved by this situation. Oh, it's true, this is an uh, important moment, but it's a moment of emotion because our entire life... Before returning to France, Pierre visits Digit's prospective girlfriends. No, be nice, be nice. Yes, you're a beautiful boy, very good. An exchange of scent is customary among gorillas. Sadly, it's time to leave. Over a thousand kilometers away, Digit awaits Pierre. That's grass, all right. Cow pasture, my goodness. <laughs> Gorilla land. It's not bad after all. A British-style downpour greets Pierre when he returns to his park. Where are the babies? I'm here, I'm coming. Here we are, here I am, here I am, I'm here. I told you he'd be back, my little sweetheart. Oh. Everything okay? We saw some lovely little girlfriends for her. It's going to be hard to let you go, my sweetie. Of course she wants her bottle. I've prepared your baby bottle, my little one. Big hugs. Big hugs here. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, that was a lovely hug. You're my little happiness, you are. Are you all right? You weren't too cold today, my darling. Come here. Come see me. Come here, Digit. Come on, we're going to let Eliane go. She's got to leave. Uh, what is it? She really has to go home. I have some shopping to do. We'll stay here, just the two of us. Can I have a little kiss? Digit. Can I have a little kiss? See you later. You don't want to, do you? Jean-Christophe, a bilingual veterinarian, has joined the team at St. Martin le Plain. Stéphane, who has worked at the park for six years, makes the introductions. Uh, Tam Tam's a really nice daddy. He never makes a fuss, he's always been watching, he manages his group really well. He's from England, he's from Howlers, yes? He's from England too, from Howlers, yeah. With food, Jean-Christophe has managed to become accepted by Tam Tam's group. Are you taking them all? 
Howlett's pioneering program is already up and running in the Batiki Plateau National Park of Gabon. Six gorillas born in England have left for Gabon to learn to live with 30 or so young orphan gorillas. The social behaviour of gorillas is highly complex and this long-term project is followed by conservationists who care for the gorillas as they learn to live in the jungle. Scientists estimate that 93% of the great apes have disappeared during the 20th century, mainly due to hunting and deforestation. Today, there are fewer than 100,000 gorillas sharing the planet with us. Howlett's initiative, supported by the Saint-Martin-La Plaine Park, brings a glimmer of hope for the future of gorillas in the third millennium. While waiting for the gorillas to arrive from England, Digit experiences some great moments of freedom with Pierre. In the room Pierre, Eliane and Digit share, there is no water, so for their morning shower, Pierre and Eliane must go to their apartment in the centre of the village. See you later. Digit. Digit. To look after Digit, they were forced to give up their apartment almost six years ago, since it was out of the question to cross the village with Digit every day, with the risk she would run away. Abandoning their home is not the only sacrifice the couple have had to make. The park is close to bankruptcy, all because of the money spent on the construction of Digit's future home. They receive no financial assistance. They are not millionaires. They are farmers. The park's income is from entrance fees alone. The high season is over and autumn is setting in. In the sanctuary, Pierre is disappointed. The grass has not grown. He consults an expert. If over the next few months we observe a deterioration of this whole area, I'm going to say it's a failure. If in one year's time we're still having this same conversation, that will mean I'll have to resort to plastic grass. That would be a bit of a pity. Right, we'll just have to rip it all up and start again. Autumn has arrived, and there is plenty of water in the hillside reservoir. Pierre is more relaxed. His projects are taking shape. The arrival of the English gorillas has been planned. He now knows that Digit will have a future in a group of her own age. Today is the 27th of October, Digit's birthday. No, not up there. Oh, you're going to bend my spine in two. Oh, oh my sweet, you're too heavy. You just don't realize. She wants to be carried like a little girl. She's six years old and I'm 60 and she weighs 80 kilos. She's as heavy as me and she wants to be carried like a baby. Oh. Come on, wow. Whew. My goodness, you're heavy. You're too big, my girl. You're too big to be carried like that. Wait, I'm going to open the gate. I'll come and get you, but let me open the gate. At six years of age, highly inquisitive and weighing 80 kilos, Digit is becoming more difficult to handle. Oh, 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 oh Digit, please. Stop right there, stop. We're not going over there, Digit, no, it's blocked off there. Let's go, come here. Come on. Uh, walk beside me, come on, get down. Uh, oh. Come on now, come on, come here. Come on, the chimpanzees are excited this morning. Come on. Come, baby, come on, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Good. Oh, I'm too old for this. There will be no birthday cake or candles for Digit, but she won't be forgotten. Oh, 
We're going to give a digit a lovely birthday present. 17 tons of rope for climbing. Oh my goodness, what big crates. Oh, it was a good deal, this lot of rope, because if you had to buy these ropes new, it would cost a fortune. The price at auction wasn't too high, so we could buy them quite cheaply. And now we've ropes for all our primates for a very long time. Ah, oh, that's going to be superb. They're going to love playing with that. Unlike other gorillas that live mainly on the ground, Digit loves to be in high places. She is very grateful for her birthday present. I'm not making a birthday cake, I'm just looking for some fruit and vegetables for our evening meal. Oh, we don't need candles. Animals aren't interested in silly human things like that. Eliane, do you remember six years ago, we were coming back from the south of France, we learned of Digit's birth. We didn't know them, we were committing ourselves to. And what a baby. Oh, Digit adores leeks with a bit of dressing. It's far better than a raw leek. She simply loves them cooked with some French dressing. I'll put a bit more on. No, no, don't overdo it. Just a bit. Don't exaggerate. She's going to pick up the habits of a spoiled child. Of a princess. They wait for their nourriture. She's coming. Come, my sweetie. Come here. Come here, my little sweetie. Come here. Shall we take the bracelet off? Gently now, gently. Come on. There Stop you go. there. Let's take the bracelet off. Come on. Oh, it's good, huh? Mmm. Oh, this is really delicious. Mm. This is not how you're going to get to lose some weight. They're just leeks. Oh, they're tasty leeks, eh? Oh, that went down fast. The cream, mm. All in the mouth at once. A marshmallow? Can I have one? Hey, give me some. Oh, just a little bit. We don't work just for the animals' birthdays, we must also work for the well-being of our visitors. The visitors need us and we need them. Can I take your money, madam, please? So, two pancakes and two waffles with sugar. That makes six euros. Thank you, madam. Six euros plus six euros. There are no small amounts. Here you are, madam. Mighty oaks from little acorns grow. Winter has settled in. When it snows, the park is closed to the public. In despair, Pierre doesn't know what more he can do for the lawn in the sanctuary. Look at it, at the beginning of February and hardly a blade of grass. It all died during the winter and we're going to have to start all over again. We're going to have to install the gorillas without grass. That's a whole year I've been working on this. And look at the result. Ugly, ugly, ugly and ugly. In midwinter, the park is at rest. Even Digit can take advantage and sleep in late. Imagine if it doesn't go well tomorrow, if Digit doesn't want to live with the others. What will we do? If she screams when she's near another gorilla, if she refuses to eat, if she starts making stereotypical movements, if she doesn't want to sleep, what do we do then? 
and mea culpa, eh? It would be all our fault. Then we'd really be trapped. Living with a gorilla is like living with a creature that doesn't speak the same language as us. If there are grumbling noises, nice and contented, it sounds like, mm -hmm. And then if, on the other hand, there's someone they don't like or they're angry about something, they make sounds that are much shorter. So then you know you shouldn't approach. We know when she's angry. She's never done it to us, thank God. Digit's morphology is much different from ours. For example, her thumb is very small and she has trouble making the same gestures as us. Come, I'll show you a flat. Despite this little note of humour, Pierre is not really joking. He would like to persuade Eliane to live in the new primate sanctuary between the gorillas and the chimpanzees. You'll have the best view at St. Martin. Careful! It's slippery. So, here we'll have two picture windows, like this one with double glazing and a door which will go over there, leading to the exterior walkway. So there I'm going to get the carpenter to put in a sliding picture window with a grill on the side where the animals are and there. Because the animals are going to be there? That there will be the group's night shelters, either for Plato's group or Digit's group. Are you sure it's uh, 100 square metres? No, 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 it's 40 square metres. So where are your 100 no, square metres? No, it's overall, the whole level. Ah. 100 metres square, and you'll come? So, OK, I'm putting a door in here and a living room, a dining room, kitchen and bedroom, huh? huh? You're a little smarty. <laughs> There's a great view, eh? Oh, yes, of course. As I get older, I'd like to have a little bit of comfort. Huh? The grass sown in the sanctuary has not grown, so Pierre has to opt for old turf, usually used for football fields. Oh, you've got to compare this to the Ritz for gorillas. <laughs> What's important is that it lasts, because if it grows a little and then it disappears, we don't have any other way out. Oh, I'm fed up with this, and there are still another eight pallets down there. Oh, damn, they could have made it a bit lighter. It would have been easy to lay a carpet. If the gorillas discover that by pulling on the grass they can lift up huge clumps, they're going to have a great time. The lake at the entrance to the park has been transformed into a skating rink for the barnacle geese. Nevertheless, the first signs of the end of an exceptionally harsh winter are appearing. As soon as the ice thaws, spring shows its face. A great event for the park the new sanctuary has already taken in its first resident. Discreetly, a few weeks previously, some visitors abandoned a young Barbary ape at the zoo. Imported illegally, it had suddenly become too cumbersome to keep. Fearing disease, the French authorities asked for its immediate euthanasia, but Pierre dug in his heels, treated it, and integrated it temporarily among his lodgers. Pierre has known a much bigger battle with the authorities. In 1985, his gorillas came down with tuberculosis. The authorities ordered the euthanasia of all the gorillas at St. Martin. So I said, listen, I think I know what risks we're running. No one is going to kill the gorillas. Otherwise, you'll have to send the entire riot squad and fight me with arms. I'm going to get out the heavy artillery. Even if I have to go to prison, that's how it's going to be. I asked the doctor what treatment we should follow. I said, listen, I'll sell my house if I must, but we'll treat the gorillas. And we treated them for 18 months, 70 tablets a day, and we did it, but I had to fight like hell. The two keepers, Jean-Christophe and Stéphane, are in England for three days to acquaint themselves with the English gorillas before taking them back to France. Good morning. We are coming from France and we are here for the gorillas. In England, Jean-Christophe and Stéphane are going to meet Kisham, a 13-year-old silverback male. 
For the past 18 months, he's been living in isolation. He was temperamental and aggressive towards the other males in his group. He has expressed his dominance in, in, um, uh, in unfortunately, injuring other, other gorillas. So if, if Digit reacts very aggressively towards Kishum, then he can always you know, uh, react aggressively towards her, and he will be a lot bigger than her. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, there's, there's a bit of worry there. But hopefully he won't be like that to a greater degree with, with females. Thanks to the Howlett staff, Stefan is going to experience something he has long dreamed about. J'ai le corps qui bat 120. Obviously, if she runs towards you, you can move out of the way. So you know, don't feel that you have to sit there and let her run over you. You can move out of the way. But just look natural. Um, and we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> it's between panic and not panic, but between apprehension and pleasure. Stefan has had uh, almost no experience of going in with gorillas, um, so he's understandably uh, a bit wary and a bit nervous. Um, I'm going to give you my, my sweatshirt, OK? So as a bit of padding protection. Bonding is a dangerous art but useful for establishing a rapport with the animals. Despite the risks, Stefan musters all his courage and embarks on the visit. I hope that she's not too keen to play with me. A 13-year-old female gorilla. When you first go in, you, you, your heart's pumping because you know these these animals are very very powerful and they can you know do some serious serious harm. To you. I mean, a lot of the gorillas here are going to be captive all their lives, um, so you know it doesn't matter if people go in with them. We don't go in with the tigers anymore. Uh, but uh, certainly going in with the gorillas, um, is, there's no problem there. Terrible, 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 terrible. She's so gentle. I need to do The moment has come to take the three gorillas to France. Richard, the English vet, uses an anaesthetic dart to put the powerful Kishim to sleep. Before leaving for France, the two vets carry out a final medical checkup on the majestic silverback. 190 kilo. Anyone, anyone want to give him a goodbye kiss? Now's your chance. He must have gone and died. <laughs> now, I know she said that when he's unconscious. <laughs> Slowly. Kishim is ready to travel. Now it's the turn of the two female gorillas. She's Bandy. Tamelia and Bandy are each anaesthetized in turn for a medical checkup. Okay, so Bandy, 68. It might seem cruel to transfer these gorillas, but in Africa, the females naturally leave their birth groups to be integrated into other groups of gorillas. Like 85% of primates, male gorillas have more than one mate. Yes. Okay. So it has been planned that Kishim will have Tamelia, Bandi and Digit to keep him company. Naturally, the keepers hope that Kishim will live up to expectations. Is she coming round? <laughs> Tamelia's sudden awakening takes the team by surprise and seven fully grown adults are required to hold the young, six-year-old gorilla down until Richard can inject her with more anaesthetic. Okay. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah. 
Okay, lass. The driver has estimated 12 hours on the road to take the three English guerrillas to Saint Martin le Plain in France. Okay, and we're all ready for the guerrillas now. Can you send the uh, guerrillas up behind these cars, please. Although it's a short trip to Dover, the guerrillas still need feeding and watering. They're now wide awake and not in the best mood. Close it a bit. Come on, then. Thank you. I'm wet because I put the, put the jug up and he went bang. He went <laughs> like many animals, gorillas only feel safe in familiar places. The door opens onto a new world. The old reference points have disappeared. She's just very apprehensive. Suddenly, the crate is, is a very safe place to be, so it's very strange in there for her. But she just, I think she's just checking it out in there. Here she goes. Good girl. Their natural curiosity prompts the two females to leave their transport crate at last, and the sanctuary finally springs to life. It's a dream come true for Pierre, who has spent the past five years tackling the problem of Digit's future. He has planned to take Digit to meet her two English girlfriends, Tamilia and Bandi, over the coming days. Kisham is far too heavy to lift in his transport crate. After a sleepless night on the road, Jean-Christophe, the young veterinarian, must administer his first anaesthetic to a gorilla. That's Kisham through. Still under the effect of the anaesthetic, Kisham goes back to sleep in the room at the back of the sanctuary. You don't want to You're gonna blow a kiss to Phil. Attention, Careful, arrive. here we come. Coucou Hello, moi. Digit. Bonjour, Digit. Hello, you. Bonjour, vous. After a good night's sleep, oh, Phil and Steve oh, are invited Digit. to meet Digit. Oui. Oui. Yeah, you were good, my sweetie. You were sniffing him. And what did he smell like, that gentleman there? What smells did you find? Did he smell a little bit like a gorilla, maybe? But you know, they've baby gorillas too, just like you. This is Kisham's daddy. I've never been uh, taken around uh, around the zoo uh, uh, with a gorilla before. And whereas before, perhaps Pierre was walking Digit around the zoo, this morning it was more the other way around, Digit was walking Pierre. Back in the sanctuary, Kisham, the male silverback from England, is separated from Tamilia and Bandi by a simple wooden door. Through the gap below, they exchange glances and their odors mix. The days fly by and Pierre keeps postponing the moment when he will introduce Digit to her two new friends. While awaiting the day of introduction, the gorillas communicate with each other. After some time conversing through the hatch, Kisham will at last be able to see Bondi and Tamelia through the mesh. That's good. 
at the moment all, all, all Kishum is doing is just this uh, display posture. The females are, are vocalising very sort of uh, friendly vocalisations, just low rumbling. So the females are quite anxious because so, they want to show that they are a bit you know, tougher and stronger than they look. But this, this is a new experience for Kishum to be introduced to, to females like this. He's, he hasn't been with, with females uh, in, during his adult life. I don't know, you might not have Chinese leaf, I don't know. In the wild, gorillas eat about 240 different sorts of food. In the park at saint martin la plaine the menu resembles that of a human vegetarian. The English gorilla's favourite cheese, farmhouse cheddar, is no longer on the menu. Let's go. Okay. okay, open the door. Before Phil and Steve leave, the main enclosure in the new sanctuary is open to Kishum. Kishum! Come on! Kishum! 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 Come on then! The fear inspired by this new world makes Kishim hesitate for a long time. It takes him two long hours before he dares to enter the sanctuary at last. Good boy, come on then. Hey, good boy. To everyone's surprise, the first to venture into this magnificent palace for gorillas is not Digit, but one of the English gorillas. Back in. <laughs> <laughs> this luxurious sanctuary does not interest Kishum. He would rather see another hatch open. On the other side are Bondi and Tamelia, two charming young ladies that he is anxious to meet. Would you say goodbye? Everything now seems to be under control. The English team is leaving. The situation is reassuring, but the biggest challenge is still to come. Before introducing Digit, Pierre wants to know how Kishim, the powerful male, is going to behave with the other two females, Tamelia and Bandy. In England, they lived in separate pens. The hierarchy within the group is being established. The two females are teaming up to face the large dominant Kishim, who has spent the last few months isolated. He still has much to learn about the mysteries of female company. In a gesture of provocation, Bondi picks up some straw, rubs it under her arms and throws it at Kishim. Was that a bite there? Oh, keepers, if you get the chance, you should separate them. He's isolated. Okay. Careful, she's got through. It doesn't matter, he's isolated. Isolated. I thought that given the relations they had across the wire, that it would all go more smoothly. But here, with the physical contact, it's got a bit rough. It's the month of May and the visitors are back. Pierre cannot take the risk of leaving the powerful chimpanzees in the crèche. They have become too big for such a confined space. Calm down, calm down. This installation was made for young chimpanzees, but now they're more than 10 years old. They're too close to the visitors, they react strongly to the presence of people and they've become extremely turbulent. Now I get more and more worried when I see them shaking this installation. Pierre has given them a sedative, a little tablet in each bottle, and Digit's four playmates have quickly fallen asleep. They are moved, under Digit's watchful eye, to one of the park's more suitable enclosures. 
The chimpanzee's move has changed Digit's daily routine, and she takes advantage of the situation no! for some misbehaving. Viens, ma puce. Come here, my sweetie. Viens près de moi, ma puce. Come close to me. Allez, viens, on n'est plus que tous les deux, mon bébé. Viens. Come, oh, just the two of us now. I thought she was going to go. No, mais elle cherche même pas. Oh, she's not even looking for them. <laughs> Are you okay? I told you this morning they were going to go. Huh? Huh? Are you worried? Huh? Well, she amazes me. It's okay. I thought that she would cling to me, but in the end she says to herself, this is my territory. Where are you going? Oh, Where it's good going, then. Frog? You want us to put a ladder here? And then maybe a hammer as well? You want a saw too? Oh, well, that's good, Digit. Every time one of them left, she would take me by the neck and she would squeeze me as if to say, hey, one of them's leaving. In the sanctuary, the tension is still high. Hey, Bailey, move apart for a moment. Move apart for a moment. Pierre has great fears of a violent accident in Kisham's group. Digit's introduction into the group seems to be compromised. Digit's integration with Kishan will of course be a moment of intense emotion. We love her so much that we're of course afraid that something might happen to her. That's it. That's it. Bandi! Bandi! Camilla! Worried about his protege, Pierre becomes increasingly reticent about introducing Digit to the English guerrillas, who are not getting on well together. Back in Digit's enclosure, another idea is to take shape. In another zoo, Digit's young brother, Jinko, who was also abandoned at birth by Pamela, has been attacked by a dominant male. Apparently he seems to have been traumatized by the beating he took from the big male. He told me that he attacked him twice and he said he really wanted to kill him. Faced with this drama, Pierre decides to take Jinko back and quite naturally to have him live with his big sister Digit. Indeed, at saint martin la plaine it's a family affair. A few simple rearrangements in the creche will need to be made. The nighttime routine will not be changed but from now on, Digit will leave her enclosure only via this new sliding door to get to Eliane and Pierre's bedroom. As long as we can live with Digit, if she's fine and happy with the situation, let's do it. Now she can come and go as she pleases. We'll encourage her to bond with Jinko, because her future is with other gorillas, not with us. Nevertheless, Eliane, Pierre and Digit continue to occupy the specially arranged room. While waiting for Jinko, Digit has found some other playmates. Here comes Jinko. After a nine-hour trip across France, it's the moment of truth for the entire staff of saint martin la plaine Even Digit senses the anxiety. Jinko. Jinko. Bonjour. Hello, hello. Bonjour. Hello, my little one. Bonjour, baby. But you're so small. You're just a tiny little thing. What a hard day you've had. <laughs> He's going to be four years old. He's going to be four. Come, my baby. We'll try and bond with him if he wants. Look at this little guy. Goodness me.
Uh, I was worried earlier. I said to myself, well, what if he's aggressive? And what if he's frightened of humans and so on? But the first contact indicated to us straight away that it'd be quite the opposite, and we spent a very pleasant time with him. This is also the first contact between Digit and Jinko through the bars. What a lovely boy. Oh, you're a nice lad. What I hope is that Jinko's presence will enable Digit to leave us a little, to take a step back, and to be confident with her little companion. Oh, all these children I have. We welcome with open arms any solutions, any opportunities that will allow us to keep Digit. So the fact that Jinko is alone was one solution. They're young, they still need us, and we need them. Ah, it's true that our love for gorillas means that we make mistakes. It's just too bad. Despite Pierre's doubts, the sanctuary must open for the new tourist season. Good news. Two months after their arrival, the situation has calmed down. The three English gorillas, Kishim, Tamelia, and Bandi, have at last learned to accept and even to like each other. A spark of hope is born for a species on the threshold of extinction. Pierre hopes that one day Digit will join them, but for the time being, the first part of letting go is to see if Digit will bond with Jinko. Bonjour, baby. Hello, baby. Bonjour, baby. Hello, baby. Bonjour. Bonjour, toi. Hello, you. Ça va, toi? You okay? Ça va, toi? You okay, my oui, little friend? Come and see who we have here. Yes, yeah, your little brother there. Mm -hmm. mm. Very good, my love. Very good. She's happy. She's happy. For Pierre, this first meeting is a success. All that we wish for is that Digit might live as happily as possible. They're brother and sister, so there is no question of them reproducing together. If tomorrow I was told that it was possible to reproduce a gorilla by insemination, I believe I'd do it. We hope that Digit will reproduce one day and that she will have her baby close to us. Then we could be grandparents.